Macbooks generally have a very good battery life. On the channel I've already made videos sharing some tips how to prolong the battery life. But in this video I want to look at some specific apps which can be draining a lot of battery on your Mac. But I don't want to just point out some applications in order to tell you to delete them. I actually want to give you some advice how to use these apps differently or what are the other alternatives. So let's have a look at it. I will start off with Google Chrome. Chrome is a good browser, it even has some advantages over the default Safari. But it comes with the biggest disadvantage of not being energy efficient. In fact, Chrome is one of the biggest offenders when it comes to draining batteries on MacBooks. I have it as my second browser as well, and if you don't want to give up Chrome, try to at least limit the number of tabs and windows you are using. On Safari it's well optimized, these tabs in the background, they are not taking any energy. But on Chrome every open tab is taking significant part of CPU and with that taking also the battery. So the advice here is to just close the unused tabs and windows. In this way you can work around this power consuming issue and you can still keep on using Chrome. The next app I want to look at is Spotify. Spotify is a cross-platform app and a streaming service, so it's likely to be an energy drainer for your MacBook. Streaming apps in general cause your MacBook's battery to drain quickly, because of everything they require to run. They need internet, audio and sometimes even video, and it's all power consuming. The advice here is simple, just fully quit the app once you stop using it because otherwise it will still be doing something on the background and draining the battery. Or consider switching to Apple Music, which is optimized for Mac. In general, these third-party apps are not well optimized for the Mac and then taking a lot of CPU and battery with that. Third app I want to talk about here is Zoom. That's app for calling and video conferencing. Here I will start with the advice, because Zoom actually has a web client which allows you to join a Zoom meeting or webinar in the web browser, so you don't need to download any plugins or software in your Mac. These video calling apps in general uses a lot of CPU and GPU. Again, because they use sound, they use video and the internet for extended period of time. So even using the web version will not prolong your battery. What you can also do to reduce Zoom consumption on your MacBook while you are calling is to close other background apps or you can use it in low power mode. In one of my previous videos I have created a shortcut which allow you to activate low power mode with one click, so I can use it anytime before making a call. You can also prevent battery drain by reducing screen brightness and avoid overheating it, so don't use Mac on the bed, on the sun and so on. Moving on to Discord, which is a popular messaging app among gamers. But unfortunately, it's also a battery drainer. It consumes your MacBook's resources even in the background, because it's VoIP software, voice over internet protocol, and that uses CPU and GPU all the time. But same as Zoom app, even here you can opt for a web version, so you don't need to be downloading the software to your Mac. Or the other advice here is to actually fully offload the app from the Mac. You can use Discord on your iPhone, so you will keep in touch with the messages and you don't need to be wasting the battery on your Mac. Adobe Photoshop is the next app on the list. This creative software generally consumes a ton of battery because of the high CPU usage. Particularly if it's a high-end photo editing application like Adobe Photoshop. But the same goes for other Adobe apps as well. Unfortunately for now I don't have any tip for this. One thing you can do is to keep your MacBook plugged in and use the optimized battery charging. Last app I want to mention today is VLC player. VLC for many people including me it's the best video player. It can play nearly any video format and comes with several useful built-in tools. One downside is that it drains your MacBook's battery. Again the only advice I can give you here is to always quit the app don't just close it once you finish watching a movie. There is a big difference between closing the window and quitting the app on the Mac. So make sure it's fully quit. 
I could also recommend you a power efficient application, which is the QuickTime player. But it's simply not as good as the VLC player. So I can't really recommend it because it will not play many different formats. Anyway, I hope you like this video and you have learned something new about these very common apps. Maybe you have some other app which is very popular, which I didn't mention in this video. So you can share it with me in the comments below. And I'll be happy to discuss it with you before next Monday, because new tips are coming to the channel every Monday. So see you there.